Hi, John with eTrailer. If you're ready to tow with your Lincoln or if you just need more space, then check out the Curt Class 3 receiver hitch that we installed on our 2017 Lincoln MKX. Let's take a closer look at the Curt hitch on our Lincoln. Uh, the Curt hitches come with a gloss black powder coat finish. Now, this is a Class 3 receiver hitch, which means the opening here is a 2 inch by 2 inch reinforced collar. This is the most popular size for ball mounts, for bike racks, and cargo carriers. So, uh, if you have existing accessories or if you're in the market for new ones, in my opinion, this is the way to go with a Class 3 hitch. Um, this one is also a hidden cross tube. If you notice, all you see on this is just the receiver section. The rest of the hitch is actually tucked up behind the bumper here. The hitch does not include a pin and clip. So if you need one, we have these available here at eTrailer. This is going to be a 5 8 inch pin and clip. If you're new to towing, you're going to need one of these for ball mounts and some of the accessories. Uh, some accessories, they include the pin and clip, so just check and make sure when you're ordering. Now our chain hangers here are mounted on the side and you got plenty of room for standard S-hook style or a little bit heavier duty clevis style. Now speaking of accessories, let's do some measurements for you. Uh, from the ground to the top of the inside collar here, when it's mounted on our Lincoln, 12 and a quarter inches. Now from the center of the pinhole out to our fascia, we're looking at about six and a half inches. Now these numbers are important um, if you're choosing accessories such as a ball mount. Uh, you would want one that comes out and has a rise to it to match up with your trailer. Or if you're looking at accessories that fold up when they're in the stowed position, you wouldn't want them to contact the back of your fascia. Finally, we'll get some weight capacities of the Curt hitch as far as your tongue weight rating. That's the force pushing down on your hitch, 675 pounds. That's going to be quite a bit, honestly. So if you have either a big four bike rack carrier or if you want a cargo rack with a generator on it, that's plenty strong enough to handle that. Towing wise, 4,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. Of course, that's the weight of your trailer and anything that you put in it or on it. Always check with your owner's manual to make sure that you know how much your Lincoln can actually tow. Final thoughts on the Kurt hitch here. This is the most popular size hitch. In my opinion, this is the way to go with, with a Class 3 receiver. If you like the gloss black finish, go with this. If you want a powder coat black matte finish, uh, we have our own brand e-trailer, Class 3 receiver hitches, mounts up the exact same way, uh, just style preference. Uh, as far as installation goes, uh, both of those hitches are going to install the same way on this car. Um, it'll be easier for you if you're going to do it on your driveway, if you maybe had some ramps to back up onto and give you a, a little bit of clearance. Um, we also got some tips and tricks as far as um, getting it installed with your exhaust and everything else. If you want to see how we did it on our Lincoln today, stick around, we'll show you. Now, to begin our installation, we'll come over uh, to the corner of the vehicle here. Uh, we're on the passenger side. We're going to remove two five and a half millimeter bolts here or seven thirty seconds if you want to use standard. Now this job's going to be a little bit easier to do if you have ramps that you can back up on or maybe some jack stands to to prop the car up a little bit on your driveway. This is something you can do in your garage or on your driveway. You don't necessarily need a lift to do this. Set these off to the side. Grab a 10 millimeter socket. You're going to have two 10 millimeter nuts that need to come off up here. Set these off to the side. Then come over to your wheel well. You're going to have two push pin fasteners that you need to remove. There's going to be more, but it's going to be the one on the furthest inside here and this one here. I'm using a trim panel tool, but you can just use a flathead screwdriver if you like. You just pop the center section out. And it can be stubborn sometimes, especially behind the wheel like this. You're going to get a lot of dirt and grime in there. Huh. Is it really being stubborn?
So we ended up just having to force them out. I just took the, the tool and kind of pried them out. And then, if, so if you do that and it's still stuck, once they're out, just get your tool and kind of open them up by hand so that when you reinstall them, they'll be ready to go. Now, that's all the fasteners that are holding this plastic box on. So you can simply maneuver this down and out of the way. You're going to have one of these on both sides. Uh, it's the same process to remove them. Now, using the same sockets that we used before, you're going to have six um, of these bolts here across the center section, the plastic center section. So we need to remove these, and then we're going to have one 10 millimeter flange nut right here in the middle that comes out. Then we can remove the center plastic insert here. We can take a cam buckle tie down strap, um, and I've attached it just on the springs here. We're going to be lowering the exhaust, and so we want this strap to come across to support the exhaust as we take it down. In the instruction manuals uh, for the Lincoln models like this, they want you to remove the rear fascia, and we have been successful here at eTrailer um, just by lowering the exhaust and kind of pulling out to allow the exhaust system to come down and relax. And we'll show you how to do that right now, save you a step from having to peel your bumper off. Now take some uh, silicone spray and spray down the rubber isolator for your exhaust. And you're going to have one of these on both sides. If you don't have silicone spray, you can use soapy water. Um, silicone really makes life a little bit easier on these. And to remove this, you can take a pry bar like this, and we're going to be sliding it off. You really want to make sure you get some of that silicone or soapy water inside of here so you can pull down and spray it in there. It makes a big difference um, when you're trying to get these rubber isolators off. So as you can see, just by having enough silicone in there, I was able to push it off with my thumbs. That's how much of a difference the silicone spray makes. So um, like I said, you're going to have one of these on both sides. Now this part, you're definitely going to need to be able to pull kind of out and down and push away on your muffler at the same time. Um, we have the rubber isolators that we took off on either side. We have our strap under here, but I've got it a little loose right now um, because as you, you need the movement to be able to swing the exhaust pipe up here around these clips. So just know that, um, that your strap here isn't tight and it's not going to be supporting your exhaust. So once you finally clear under the bumper here, try to tighten up your strap and then work the other side out as well. Okay, there's one side. The exhaust actually shifted over. It makes it a lot easier. So kind of swing it over once you get the one out, and it'll come out just like this. We've got our exhaust down. You can see the heat shield here. In the center of it, we're going to have a stud right here, um, and we need to cut this off. So I'm going to use a Dremel tool today. You can use a Sawzall or whatever you need to do. Um, just remove this stud, cut it off uh, as close as you can to the trunk up here. You don't have to cut all the way through. You can just cut mostly through, and it just gives you a set of pliers, and you can break it off. Now, this is the hardware that you're going to get with your hitch. Um, and in the kit, you're going to have some fish wires. You're going to have some spacer blocks, some flange nuts. And then you have a couple of regular nuts and some lock washers here. Um, and this is what we're going to be bolting your hitch up to the Lincoln with. So we can undo these. We're over here on the driver's side 
of the frame, but everything that we're going to be doing here is going to be the exact same on the passenger side. We're going to be using the four holes that I've circled here. There's two on the bottom and two on the side here, um, and that's where the hardware is going to go. Um, now, to get the hardware up inside the frame, we're going to be using this oval hole right here. So, what we need to do, um, I usually like to start with the hole furthest away to fish the wire up there. I'll feed the coil end into here, and we want to come out the oval hole here. So if you need to bend the wire a little bit to get it to come out, or if you get lucky like I just did, you don't need to do anything. So we'll take a spacer block and just set that on there, and then take a carriage bolt and thread that onto the spring. And then feed the spacer block either end, doesn't matter. Feed the spacer block up into the hole. And then the carriage bolt. And just pull it through just like that. And then just repeat that process for the other remaining holes here. So this is what it should look like on both sides when you're finished. Now before you raise the hitch, make sure you push in the ones on the side, on both sides, passenger and driver's side, just enough because the hitch is going to slide up the frame rail like this and we don't want this to block, uh, we don't want these bolts here to block it from going up all the way. With an extra set of hands, you can lift this up. You're going to be feeding the fish wires through the hitch from the inside out. on the side. We'll go through and then on the bottom here you're going to see a larger hole. Ignore this. We're doing just the front and then the back here. With everything fish do, we can lift it up. And you can just pull one of the side ones out to let it hang for you. Take the fish wire off. Good idea to keep your finger on the bolt to keep it from falling back into the frame. Then take one of your flange nuts. And while we're here, this bolt this one and this one get the regular flange nut. Now the one on the inside that's closest to the gusset here is going to get the split washer and the regular nut. So with the nuts snugged up we can torque these to the specs that we're going to find in our installation manual. Um, I suggest torquing the ones on the bottom here first because that'll raise the hitch up into that position and then these will line up just a little bit better. Make sure you do this on both sides. Now with your hitch torqued up to the factory specs, it's time to replace the exhaust. Um, just like when we took it off, uh, leave yourself enough slack down here um, and kind of slide it up into place. There's the one side. Kind of push, pushing over towards the driver's side as much as I can here. And then we can come underneath to the rubber isolators with the exhaust mounted. We can remove our cam buckle tie down strap. Now with your exhaust mounted, the only other thing you're going to have to do is replace your two plastic boxes on either side of the car by the wheel well. This center section that we took out doesn't go back on. The hitch replaces that now.
Now, the last step is just to replace uh, the plastic panels on either side of your car. Now, this isn't in the directions, but we ended up just using a Dremel tool, and we just cut the cap off of it. A lot of people, you may not have a half-inch drill bit laying around, and it has to be, you know, exactly in the center. This um, really doesn't matter anymore. Um, having a cap on it because our hitch is up there blocking everything on the inside of the frame anyway. So it's just easier uh, to cut this off. You can use a, a sawzall even and just trim the cap off of it. This way you won't have any fitment issues when you go to reinstall it. And you can take the push pins and just snap them back into place here. Just do this on both sides and you'll have completed your installation. And that was a look at Kurt's Class 3 receiver hitch on our 2017 Lincoln MKX.